standard two will be over order of operations. Starting off, here are the vocab terms for this lesson. First, evaluate, which is to find the value and the order of operations, which is the rule that tells you which operation to perform first. Let's take a look at what this order is, and then we'll jump into some examples. The order of operations follows a few steps, such as step one, where we would evaluate expressions inside of grouping symbols. Examples of grouping symbols would be parentheses or these square brackets. Next, we would evaluate powers. So we would look for anywhere we have examples of exponents. Next, we would multiply or divide from the left to the right which means when I scan through and I find, say, division first, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Even though we say multiply, multiplying and dividing have the exact same placement in the order. And then adding and subtracting. What you're probably more familiar with is PEMDAS. Which says the exact same thing as we see here in these steps. First, we start off with the parentheses. Anything that's inside needs to be simplified. Next, we move on to simplifying any powers you might have. Then we multiply and or divide. We got to remember that these are left to right. And then we have addition and subtraction, which same thing is from the left to the right. For some, this might be a review. But as part of this lesson, we'll go a little deeper, adding in more steps to make sure we're getting really good at following the order and being really careful. To start, we need to talk about evaluating these exponents. To remember what exponents mean, Let's look at this 3 to the 5th. That 5 for the exponent tells me I'm going to take the number 3 and I'm going to multiply it out 5 times. And from there, I just need to go through and simplify this see what I get as an answer. I know this would be 9. And there are multiple ways you could go about your work for this. There is not just one way. So if you do this slightly different, as long as you're getting the same answer, we're on the right track. All right, so 27. From here, I'm going to go ahead and get my calculator. I get 81 times 3. And that will give me 243. It's important to remember how to do powers by hand. That is why we're going through this exercise. 
Next is 2 to the 4th, so it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to show another way of approaching this. Many times I like to group these, so I'll start with the first 2 times 2, which is 4. And the second part, 2 times 2 is also 4. But I still have to multiply those two pieces together. Next, I get 4 times 4 is 16. So 2 to the 4th is 16. And finally, 4 to the 5th power. Let's see. I have 16. This also gives me 16. And I'll bring down that last four. All right, so I get two fifty six. So if it times that by four, so I get an answer of one thousand twenty four. Now we're going to do this as a complete problem. We're going to need to use the order of operations to help us simplify. When I look at this, I'm going to go ahead and write off to the side PEMDAS just so I can refer back to the steps. First, I need to go through and see if there are any grouping symbols, so parentheses or brackets. There are none, so I'm going to move forward. Next up is exponents. I have this 2 squared. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. Notice that I'm going to write down the entire problem, but instead of writing 2 squared, I'm now going to write 4. I'm going to ask myself if there are any more exponents. There are not, so that step is complete. Next up, I'm going to scan the problem to see if there is any multiplication or division. I have right here negative 8 divided by 4. That would give me negative 2. So I have 16, now minus 2 plus 14. So these two are done. And now I need to go through and add and subtract to simplify all of this. Remember adding and subtracting still goes left to right. And I see that first up I have 16 minus 2. That is 14. And now I must do 14 plus 14 gives me an answer of 28. Now we have grouping symbols. So when I look at this problem, I'm going to need to make sure that I first look inside the parentheses and see what it asks me to do. So first, I need to look at this set of parentheses. Inside of it, it says 10 minus 6. So that's what I'm going to perform first, that subtraction. That gives me 4 
and then I'm going to bring down every other part of the problem that I have not completed yet. And I ask myself if there is any more things I need to simplify inside of the parentheses. Four by itself is already simplified, so I am done with the parentheses step. I'm going to go ahead and scan through to see if there are any exponents. There are not. So now I can move on to the multiplying and dividing step. Scanning left to right, I first have 4 divided by 2. That's going to give me 2 plus 5 times 4. I see that I still have some multiplication, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get 2 plus 4 times 5 is 20. As I look, there are there is no more multiplying and dividing, so I'm done with that step. Scanning through, all that's left is for my addition, 2 plus 20 is 22. I have another example that has two sets of grouping symbols. When we have two sets of grouping symbols like this, I need to go with which one is the most inside set. So I have the brackets, which is one set of grouping symbols. But inside of that, I have these parentheses and so I need to simplify what's inside of that before I can deal with these square brackets so that's 2 plus 3 is 5 now that whole thing was squared Now I'm bringing down all the pieces that are left. Now I can look at the inside brackets. It's the only grouping symbols left. And I see as I go in there, exponents. So I'll go ahead and simplify the 5 squared to start. Comes 32 minus 25. I still have not finished simplifying inside of these grouping symbols. So I need to look at, I have subtraction. And even though I have this 6 out in front, which tells me that I'm going to have to multiply. I'm not at that step yet because I must simplify what's inside first. 32 minus 25, I get 7. And now I have completed everything inside of the bracket. I'm left with a single number. And now I can deal with everything that's outside of those brackets. The 6 out front is actually multiplying to what's inside of the brackets. Whenever we set a number next to either a grouping symbol or a variable, it represents multiplication. 6 times 7 gives me 42 is my final answer. Evaluating an algebraic expression. You could be given an expression that has multiple variables in it. And then I'm going to give you values for those variables. 
I see that x will equal 3, y will equal 5, and z will equal 3. In order for us to start the problem, we need to first perform substitution, which is where we replace the variables in the problem with their values. Once we complete that, we'll be able to move into the order of operations to finish evaluating. All right, so first up, we're gonna go ahead and replace what we have. I have this three times x squared, but I know that x is three. Then in this second set of parentheses, I have two times y. Well, y is five plus z cubed, but z is three. So now we're going to need to be very careful and make sure we are solving everything in the right order because now we have quite a few parentheses whenever we substitute in values for a variable we will put them typically inside of parentheses if there are other things going on around it such as that 3x squared that x has multiplication and an exponent on it so we have to put its value in parentheses first. I'm gonna go left to right and look for grouping symbols. The very first thing I find is this three squared. Well, three squared is just nine and I'm going to say that that is simplified and move on to what is in the next set. All right. So over here on the right most side, I have these parentheses. And inside of it, I have a lot of stuff that I need to simplify. I'm going to go ahead and start. I see an exponent. I have that 3 squared. So I know 3, I'm sorry, 3 cubed. 3 cubed will give me 27. And I'll copy down the rest of the problem. Inside that set of parentheses, I still have multiplication. So I'll go ahead and multiply. Two times five is 10. And I'll bring down the rest of the problem. Inside that set of parentheses, I have addition. So I will go ahead and Simplify that. 10 plus 27 is 37. And since there is nothing going on outside of those parentheses directly to it, notice that I'm going to leave off the parentheses now that I have simplified what's inside of it. Now for the overall problem, I need to go ahead and do my multiplication. 
I get 27 plus 37. And when I add those together, I get an answer of 64. Now I have one more example to show you where we're going to look at a word problem. Followed by examples for you to try on your own. In example five, it tells me that the volume of a basketball is four thirds of pi multiplied by the radius to the third power. So we need to take a step back to our previous lesson and figure out what this is trying to tell us. First off, I see that the volume is Previously, I had mentioned how volume tells us I'm going to have a multiplication problem. In this case, it is telling me a formula or an equation, specifically the equation for volume. V for volume is, to put an equal sign, 4 thirds, four thirds is the fraction, four over three, of, which is multiplying, pi is a number, which we use this symbol, I have multiplied, so I've seen multiple different representations of multiply by the radius r. In this case, when they give us this variable r, it is a number to the tells me I'm going to have an exponent and that exponent will be 3. So I start off with writing that algebraic expression. Next it tells me how to use it. It wants me to find the volume of the 4.75 inch radius basketball. This is the radius, so that means r is equal to 4.75. So I'm going to go into the equation we just wrote and substitute instead of r, it's 4.75 cubed. That's not the only way to write it. Instead of writing the multiplication symbol, you could put it in parentheses. And now we can go ahead and solve. Using my calculator, I will find 4.75 cubed. And I'm going to ground it. Notice that since we're dealing with decimals, we're probably going to have multiple different decimal places. I'm going to go ahead and round it to 107.17. Since I had two decimal places at the start, I'm going to go ahead and use two decimal places here. For this answer, I'm going to leave it in what we call in terms of pi, meaning I'm not going to multiply pi as part of this. My answer is going to have the pi symbol. So I need to go ahead and do 4 thirds times 107.17. 
I get an answer of 142 point. When I try to round this one, it says 895. If I try to round it off at two decimal places, I'm actually going to end up with just 0.9 or 0 0.90. And last, I still would need to multiply by pi, but for this problem, we're not going to. We're going to just leave it right there on the end. And that is the answer to this problem. At any point, always feel free to pause and rewind. On the next page, you're going to pause it when the page comes up and try out those problems on your own. Then when you start the video back up, you'll be able to see what the answers look like. So these are your problems to try. Pause the video, and when you come back to it, the answers will be on the screen. Here are your solutions. Notice that when I was doing the fourth and fifth problem, I went ahead and underlined each step that I was doing in case you wanted to know what parts I was simplifying. There is still that last example at the bottom. Pause the video if you need to copy anything down. But I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the final example. Here is the last example.